Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and today is mega upgrade day for the Auto Edits Jeep. We have the Fusion Semi Float 60 bolt in crate axle going in. Take your hand off that mouse, hunker in. I'm gonna bring you over and show you all of the great details that make this what I think the best option for the bolt in Dana 60 upgrade for the Wrangler. I'll walk you through every step of the install from getting this thing underneath your rig, getting it centered up, and even measuring for your new drive shaft, because that's the only new component you're gonna need to make this work. It uses your JK brakes and wheels. It's a great option for getting Dana 60 strength underneath your rig. Well, we'll start by getting the old axle out of there. Oh, come on, Sally. All right, so now that we have the original Dana 44 out of the Jeep, uh, I wanted to just run through a couple of things where I found its limitations over my years of experience. So right away, what I did to the Jeep was throw 37 inch tires on it. So I changed the gear set to 488 to one. That is the most like stock final drive ratio. And I was really happy with that. And so I went with a 488 inside this because now I'm running the 37 inch BFGs again. So, and it's very happy there. The things that I have had a problem with on the Dana 44 is I go through pinion bearings and pinion seals on the front here. So that is a problem that I run into. And then one time I actually, I was running out at uh, Sand Hollow, Milt Mile, got a little bit too much traction and twisted the housing on the tubes here. So that was a bummer. So the whole housing, these stayed attached to the Jeep and the whole housing went Goink, like this. And luckily the guys at Dixie 4x4 were able to get this thing tweaked and then perimeter welded the tubes to the housing. Now, that is my very first thing I'm gonna point out on the Fusion 60 here. It is, it comes, it's the only one in, in this family in the Semi-Float 60 bolt-in upgrades. It's the only one I see that has this, the perimeter, the tubes perimeter welded into the housing. And that, to me, because that's something I've actually had a problem with on this thing, it's nice to see. That is just there, done. Peace of mind, done. Let's now dive into all of the things that you have going on right here. This has three and a half inch tubing with half inch thick wall. You have quarter inch laser cut steel plate for everything. So your track bar, you obviously have this adjustable, which I love. The front end, once I put the, uh, the Fusion Elite 44 in the front of this thing, the Jeep handles like a, a car. It's amazing. These are the things that Fusion pay attention to that I really like. The welds are insane on this, just like on the front. And all of the bracketry is all bolt-in JK stuff. Now you guys are wondering, like, am I doing this? Can you run 40 inch tires? That's like the big thing. Are you gonna do this and then run 40s? No, the five lug axles and the semi-float setup is not ideal for 40s. Like sure you can do it, but it's just, you're asking too much of this part. So why? do that. Like if you want to go 40s, it's get an eight lug, get a full float, do all of those things. If you want to kind of cheap your way into that, that's fine. But know that that's what you're doing. What I'm doing is building and thinking about all of the components that are going together into this rig to make it the best and the strongest in the price point and for the reality of what I want. Last two things on this. This is a low pinion Dana 60. Now, there is an option on the, in this family of things that has a high pinion and it confuses me because the whole point of going this way is for strength and peace of mind. High pinion in the rear is running on the weaker side of the gear set. So you're putting a stronger Dana 60 ring and pinion in here, but you're running off the weak side of it for this little bit of clearance off the snout. So this is something that's very desirable to me, a low pinion Dana 60 housing. So now the final thing that Fusion does to address the weakness of the semi-float axle as opposed to a full float. Now, what's the difference? The semi-float axle is where the axle shaft that goes into the differential connects directly to the wheel flange out here. So it's all one piece. And then that is carried in this bearing here and then the axle splines into the middle here. So now what Fusion did is offer a 40 spline option. Now, 40 spline is an extremely good upgrade to do to a Dana 60. It's a very strong axle shaft. And so these are 4130 chromoly axle shaft. And that just to me, I 
I just don't think I'm going to break that in the way that I drive, but that peace of mind is amazing. And so by going that way, you now have a much larger wheel bearing. So all of those things, you're just kind of stacking the deck again in your favor to if there's any perceived weak spot, you have that kind of mitigated by offering a larger axle shaft, a bigger bearing. So you have those things in place. A full float axle housing, on the other hand, is where the wheel bearing and the drive flange that attach, the wheel attaches to is separate from the shaft that goes into the differential housing. The axle shaft is just a splined axle on both sides. It's kind of like the front on your Jeep. If you can think of the way the front splines in and has a nut that attaches to the unit bearing, that's what a full float is. So that way if the axle shafts breaks inside here someplace on an obstacle, you can pull the center hub off, pull the axle stub out and get yourself off the trail it would roll. This scenario, if you were to break it here, you would have some instability and could have some problems. So that is the lengthy big list of bullet points of why this, I think, is the top of the heap in the bolt-in Dana 60 crate axles for the Jeep Wrangler. It just checks every box, and then I even learned a few as I went along. So let's get this thing installed. Now it's that time I've been waiting for for so long to get this thing underneath the Jeep and in place. And here we are in place. Let's attach some arms to it and make this a little more permanent. All right, coming in hot with some control arms. One of the cool things about making a little dolly or just having some jack stands is makes this very easy, especially if it's it close, kind of close in place. And you can wiggle it around just like that. So the, we want this back here. Likewise with the upper, we'll go in like such. Get that captured. And then you have to rock the housing a little bit to get this to fit. There we go. We'll get this nut started back here. Now that we got it kind of stabilized there, I'm gonna go ahead and hang it with some ratchet straps and then get our cart out of the way. Now that I have all the connecting points attached to this thing, I feel a little safer with it, uh, not wanting to flop around. I'm gonna go ahead and simulate ride height because I took a measurement with the old axle. And so from the inside of the spring perch here to the leading edge of the spring perch on the axle was 14 and a half inches. So now I have it at about 15. So I'll just use the our ratchet straps to get us the rest of the way here. Should get us there. Perfect. All right. So we now are simulated at ride height. Now is a great time to kind of get your preliminary dial in. And what I did here is you just pick, this may work better for you than me, like whatever measurement is good for you. I'm picking the inner frame rail right directly above the bump stop holder. And I'm going to measure across to the center of this spring holder and I have 39 and an eight inches there and I'm going to just cross measure that to this spring holder and that's 39 and an eighth so I am dead perfect side to side now we'll double check that once we get it on its own weight I didn't even have to change the measurements of the lower control arm here the Jeep was perfectly square before and sure enough these brackets actually are dead on there. The only thing I'm finding I'm changing is I'm adjusting the upper just to actually take some of the pinion angle out. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So we're totally good here. Measure, measure, measure. Like getting your axle square under your rig will pay dividends for thousands of miles. So now is the time to really pay attention to what you're doing. Next, I like to go up to the bump stops or as the cool kids say, full stuff. That way you can make sure nothing is getting hit and everything's lining up right. So as you can see, the bump stop is hitting dead square there. Let's check the other side. 
and we're looking pretty good on this side. Now there is an option to offset this, but I think I'm gonna leave it here for now and we'll cycle it in the field and see how it hits. Now is also a great time to double check that the housing at full stuff here is not hitting anything. I have the tail, the back section of the tailpipe off right for now, but you could see it's gonna get over the track bar pretty easily. And you can see that the pinion, since I got it up, so this is full stuff and the pinion has got good clearance on the gas tank. And I think it looks pretty good. Let's sag this thing out and uh, see about putting some springs in there. Now that we've finished at full stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it with the three uh, pucks that I started with on the other axle, just to dial it in and then we can adjust later. I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to run two, so I'll take the third one off eventually, but let's just get it out on the trail first. So now it's time to start getting some of our connecting things, like our uh, e-locker wiring. I'll explain that why I'm going back with the e-locker in a minute, and we'll attach the parking brake cable now. The parking brake cable just goes right in the stock spot just like that, and then we'll just put that in like that. Boom, there we go, ready to go. Now, since I'm running the Metal Cloak six-pack shocks here, I actually can attach this adapter here that moves the shock mounting point up three and a half inches, and that's because this shock body affords me the ability to get maximum up travel and down travel in this really compact package. I've been really happy with the six pack shocks over the years. So we'll go ahead and get these attached here at on the new add-on bracket. I'm not gonna go ahead and cut the bottom bracket off of these things yet because I'm not committing to that. It's such a beefy bracket. It can stand hitting a few things. I'm not gonna miss that ground clearance yet. You can see that the Fusion Axle has the Eaton E-Lock or Pigtail coming right out of the top of the housing here. And I just put the plug that actually comes with the wiring harness. Now I do have a cool little trick here, and I'm not sure, I have just this bizarre OCD that this little wiring harness here will trick this Rubicon Jeep into thinking that this is a Rubicon locker. Now the stock Rubicon e-lockers have an activation plug, and then it has a sensor plug that it lets the computer and the, on the Jeep know if the locker is engaged or not. So that's when you have either a solid light on the dash that lets it know that it's engaged, or that flashes at you when it knows, when it's a little confused, when it's, and it's trying to engage and it's not. So that's what this is for. Now, <laughs> I don't know why I have this weird kink, but I wanna still fool the computer. And I found this pretty cool little harness from Spicer. I'll put a, a, a let's see, let's get a part number out there for you there. So this little thing, I'll put a link to these things. They're hard to come by, they're hard to find. I had to order this from my local, special order this at my local O'Reilly's. And why I wanna trick my Jeep into thinking it's uh, uh, still a Rubicon and doesn't flash, I hardly even use that switch on the dash. I use a breakout switch in my painless trail rocker, but I just like having it right. It just feels more right. All right, so I got the connectors to the Jeep activation harness spliced in, taped up and good. And then all we have to do now is inside the harness is this plug right here, which is the sensor wire. And then I'll just put that in so it's now connected in like that. And I will just zip tie, I may put a few wraps of tape on this just to, I'll just feel better about that. And then I'll zip tie that up here out of the way, away from the exhaust, away from anything. And we'll just attach that to the connector here, get a nice snap and that's not going anywhere. And we are dialed. And then we'll reattach the sway bar. Make sure that when this is at full droop that that doesn't go too far because that'll flip. Now it's time to for the scary part and that's getting the weight of the Jeep onto that axle. So we're gonna carefully jack it up, and see if we can get it off these jack stands in the rear here. Okay, Jeep is being supported by the axle. All right, now I'm gonna get my bigger jack, get it up one more. I just wanna go up one more to match the front. Yes, Jeep is now back under its own weight. Love it. 
The Jeep seems real happy sitting on its own axle for the first time, and I'm very happy too. Now, time to cue the time lapse, and I'll get under there and torque all of the suspension. Remember, do that once it's under its own weight. You get a bounce or two on there, everything seems good. 125 foot pounds for all the big control arm stuff, and you can get online and see all the, I'll put a link in the description to the page I use for all my readings, but here we go. Let me show you about the drive shaft. This is the only thing that normally you would have to actually replace to do this entire swap. So let me show you two things, the angle and how to measure for the length that you want here. So I've converted already to a billet flange at the front here and the fusion axle comes with this bitchin' forged yoke here and this is a 1350 yoke in the back. So you just keep track of those two things. Double carden means that you now run your pinion angle directly up at this. So it should be it, just a straight shot, just like that. And so the fusion axle is pretty much, that's what I set the pinion at. A good rule of thumb is you could go as much as sh do the straight shot at your, at your transfer case and then go two degrees, three degrees down here. And that gives you a little bit of leeway for the brackets like the track bar mount and the spring purchase. But you saw I have a little bit of metal cloak goodness back there helping that out. And the fusion axle kind of just seems to just be dialed design for this kind of thing because we're, we're dialed. Now, to measure, you go right from the mounting flange here to the mounting, to the right to the edge of this, which would end up being the middle of the U-joint and it's 45.5. 45, 45 and a half inches is the drive shaft I'm gonna order. So I'm gonna get that ordered and we'll see you in a flash. Kaboom. Okay. While I was back here assembling the brakes, I thought I'd go ahead and throw a new set of Z36, the Power Stop Z36 pads on here. They're amazing, just get them for your rig. Uh, they've just proven to be great. I wanna demystify a little bit about the parking brake setup here. Now this, this has the parking, this came with the parking brake and backing plate all on and in place, so this is really nice. And this is where you would adjust it. I get that comment every once in a while from fellow manual transmission owners that they have a tough time getting it and adjusting it to get it right. And this Jeep has actually been pretty good. I just adjust, the adjuster is right here. So if you can imagine, I'll put the rotor on in a second. So it's basically a, like a drum brake inside of your disc brake. So if your rotor is on and you don't have access to that thing from here, you just op to pull this little rubber cover off back here and you can either use a screwdriver or a brake spoon and that's what, what this little guy is here. And then you could just reach in there like this and adjust that and you would just tweak that thing just like that and just rotate it and that would expand the brake shoes out into the drum and offer a little bit more resistance. Now here's how I do that adjustment and we'll just test what it what it's like before I do any adjustments there. And I'll show you what I look for in this setting. So I'll get my brake rotor on and you make sure that it's freewheeling. And I just want to hear just a tiny bit of drag. So right now I don't, I, I almost feel like they're touching. There's a little resistance as I put the rotor on. So what I'll do is I'll just put like two clicks in and then we'll test it again. So you can hear that, you can hear it as it goes around. It touches, little freewheel, little touch. So I'm gonna put a couple more clicks in. One, two more clicks in it. So you hear that, it's a nice, fairly consistent, barely a drag, like I can still turn it very easy, but they touch, just barely are touching and then that will just wear in to perfection. That has served me very well over the years. Hopefully that helps one of you guys when you go and wrestle with your parking brake. So now I'm gonna hit the time-lapse mode and just get the brakes attached to this thing.
We're moments away from slapping the tires on and putting this thing on the ground for the first time. But you guys ask all the time how I keep the rig so clean or how do I get it back to this level right here. Especially after the trip that I went up the Pacific Northwest, we hit mud. This thing was the muddiest it has ever been. The mud between the rim was so packed in that it scraped these things up. I may rattle can those here in the future, but for now, I really wanna get this thing out and drive it. So on the front right now, all I did was just pressure wash it and then hit it with Toolbox Buddy and a rag and just finish it off and it looks fantastic. The axle is looking absolutely super fly. Now back here, pressure washed and it was pretty bad and I had some time. And then speaking of David with uh, from Willamette Motor and Fab, he turned me on to this Seymour paint. I used to just buy whatever at the Pet Boys, like Duplicolor, um, rattle can stuff back here or Rust-Oleum. This is the absolute bet, not a commercial. This is just the best stuff I've ever sprayed out of a can. It's Seymour. I think you can only get this stuff on their website right now, but it's called their PBE E-Coat. And this is black, they have different colors and stuff. And this is how it's sprayed out in here. So after washing it and just wiping it down, I just did a rattle can restoration in here. And look at this stuff. It sprays down so nice and covers fast. Holy mackerel, thanks David for turning me on to this. This is my new jam right here. <laughs> Going up. Going down. Test drive time. Ooh. Well, we have it on this incline in the driveway. Let's test the parking brake. Feels perfect and off on man it's a it's perfect it's absolutely perfect we'll drive it we'll see how it feels but that's the technique i usually use look we're going to trust it running in neutral we'll go get our outside camera let's get rolling I'm a little nervous i know i'm always nervous you guys always <laughs> if you've been to this channel you know i roll it out of the garage and we send it on these huge uh upgrades and installs and gosh knock on wood i've been luck we've been lucky so far let's hope it continues feels good feels good no lights on the dash hey guys okay just breathe just breathe Perfection. Okay, first impression. Perfection, again. Let's do the route, hit the big manhole covers here. Get up to speed. 45, hit the covers. Dang, we just keep making the Jeep, boom. Even more stable, it's crazy. Right now, the initial feel out in the world is really good like super good uh i've been on the 37s again now for about a little over 500 miles and 488s and 37s are just absolute perfect the jeep just feels great that way the 38s were fine but it feels a little more responsive like it should at this so it's it's better it's leaning in the right direction Right now, just kind of taking these corners, kind of sporty. The Jeep is tracking perfect, perfect, perfect right now. I keep using that word, but it is. It's just darn right excellent. Uh, the geometry back there. If you pay attention to the shot right now of the rear axle, look at the track bar. It's absolutely perfectly parallel. The Fusion axle has a little bit better access to the geometry that I look for. So I have a similar setup in the front where the suspension travels absolutely exactly where you want it. So you don't induce any weird wiggle or bump steer in the front, uh, no wiggle in the back. It's, it's just really stable 
and good. All right. Tight city U-turn. Woohoo! So like I mentioned a few times in this video already, I think the Fusion Semi-Flow 60 is the best option for us, what I call us weekend warrior wranglers. Like I need to be able to daily commute this in bumper to bumper, crappy LA traffic. And then yet I want to be able to go 85 miles an hour interstate on the highway to go wheel at Moab, Death Valley, all of those cool places. And now I have the confidence to hit stuff with a little bit more Woo pause, a little, little harder, so I can actually really attribute some skill and then a little bit of nerve to hit some obstacles with even more confidence. Like everything in the driveline right now is what I consider or I build towards bulletproof. So the comfort level, the security, the peace of mind I have in the drivetrain now is unbelievable. You guys saw those axles. All of that stuff is now Mm. All right, let's get into the mall crawler route. Let me show you this cool little setup here. So now I have the sway bar disconnected. It's in four low. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use the actual stock locker button and hit lock lock it up rear and front and there you go the computer thinking that it's a stock rubicon giggle i just think that that's cool now we'll just put it in first gear and let it idle up the little center divider here and let it just do its thing all i'm doing now is just listening for any clunks or unwanted noises from the suspension Fresh out of the garage, you don't really want to push it that hard, but I don't even hear a creak out of this thing. So there you have it, the Auto Edits Jeep is finally foundationally perfect in my opinion now you guys i can't actually argue if you want to do the 60 hybrid that they offer for the front it's not that much more expensive uh and it's a really good call i really like my elite 44 there's a certain nimbleness i feel from it yet i still have all the confidence and then i have the 60 in the rear here with 40 spline axles all of that stuff that just builds up my confidence i'm stoked it's time to get this thing in the dirt and send it. Start growing skills, getting out on adventures. So thank you guys so much for coming along on this journey with me. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel and we've got lots coming up. And until next time, enjoy your drive. Ah, this one feels real good. Ooh.